Hello and greetings from Court Place Farm, home to Oxford City FC. And we are here today to watch Oxford take on Worthing in the National League South playoff semi-final. During the regular season, both teams finished on the same amount of points, Oxford finishing third, so avoiding the eliminator and receiving home advantage for this tie, whereas Worthing finished fourth due to their inferior goal difference and have already had to beat Braintree 2-1 in the playoff eliminator to get here. With a lot to play for, let's see how today's match goes. This match is the fourth instalment of my A to Z ground series. We have another 22 to try and get through by the end of March next year. As a reminder, we are ticking off the ground starting with each of the letters from A to Z in various different leagues around the UK. And if you want to watch any of the other three, the links are in the bio and please subscribe for more. Court Place Farm has a capacity of around 2,000 and has been home to Oxford City since 1993. It's called the Raw Charging Arena for sponsorship reasons, but as always, we'll skip past that. Now that's enough preamble, so let's head into the ground. Thank you. As we get our first view of the pitch, to the right we can see the main stand which was slightly off centre but all seated and we can see to the other side a covered terrace which is actually where I'll be watching the match from. And we saw the club shop which if any of you subscribe to this series will know means that we are looking for a pin badge. We were able to find it, it was certainly the biggest so far but it was also the most expensive. More on that in the cost at the end of the video. Back to the match, there was segregation in place and Worthing had a good following so far. But going back around the pitch to the near side that we walked in through, we can actually see the old entrance gates to the old White House ground that Oxford City used to play in. A nice touch. That near side had a pop-up bar as well as an outdoor marquee and a main bar, and I believe the hospitality was served in there, but we didn't quite pay those prices. As we look to the northwest corner of the pitch, you can actually see what is a fairly unique stand. I believe according to the internet it sits 158 people, but it is tucked right in the corner. Um, and that is due to this stand here. This unique standing terrace runs parallel to the main stand, but the view is somewhat blocked by the two dugouts. I'd found myself a decent spot here, but unfortunately the sun was burning me. I do burn very, very easily though, so I had to find a bit of shelter and put the terrace behind the one goal. Looked like a great place to go. This is where we'd stand for now and we get closer to the pitch just before kickoff. Now this match was segregated and 900 Worthen fans made a great noise before the match began. They actually have only just got promoted to this league, so to be in the playoffs was a remarkable achievement in the first season. Maybe left it slightly too late before kickoff. There appears to be no space left. And just like that, the match was ready to get underway. But not before catching everyone out as Oxford decided to swap ends. Some people were moving, but it did mean that I potentially got a better view as I was able to push my way forward. Oxford are in the blue and white hoops, Worthing in the red. And just like that, as the game less than a minute underway, Worthing had a great opportunity with a great through ball, putting the player one-on-one -on -one with the keeper, a good firm stave, but worries at the back for Oxford. This number 10, Zach, was very nippy, seemed to be a fan's favourite, and actually when I was looking up after the game, he was in the National League South team of the season, a very good player. Now Oxford did have a decent chance I wasn't able to capture, the striker took the ball round the keeper, it was an open goal, I think there might have been a defender clearing back, but somehow the ball sort of went out of play and nothing happened. But now their first decent chance, a free kick. Cue the ironic cheers from the Worthing fans. It was a very hot day, so much so we can't have been any more than about 12 minutes in and the players go for a drink during an injury break. To be honest, in this first half we potentially picked the right end with Worthing having the better of the chances so far in the first 10 minutes but the Oxford fans have found their voice and are belting out some songs. Hopefully it will give the players the encouragement they need. While Worthing kept pressing forward, Oxford were very resolute and while it may not have always been the prettiest, they did make sure they cleared their lines. Some would say scrappy football, I would say very effective, but arguably not the prettiest. 
Oxford were never out of the game, but they were growing ever increasingly into the game as the match went on, getting slightly more attacking football and doing more with it than were them. And just like that, a fine finish from Zach McEachran puts Oxford City in front. Zach is actually the brother of former Chelsea player Josh McEachran, who now plays for Milton Keynes Dons, and just before this match kicked off, he would have been getting relegated, unfortunately, down to League Two. Oxford fans found their voice, and Worthing have been slightly silenced. It's fair to say that Oxford looked to be the better team, but Worthing weren't perturbed and did keep coming forward, but unfortunately for them, the quality just wasn't quite there. Worthing kept coming forward, but Oxford were just too strong. Both teams were happy to play out from the back, their goalkeepers both made mistakes, but this didn't put them off and they were happy to continue playing like this for the rest of the match. We're nearing half time and the score's 1-0. Will Oxford be able to grab another before the half, or will Worthing come down the other end and score? Zach is given a great opportunity, but unfortunately has to go slightly wide. He does cross the ball in. A climbing header at the back post sees the ball go back into the danger area, where it's stabbed in by Alfie Potter. 2-0 Oxford on the brink of half time. What more could they want? And on the flip side, one absolutely horrible time for Worthing to concede. And just like that, we get to half time. Oxford leading 2 0 against Worthing. It's hard to say it's not deserved based on what we've seen, but Worthing may feel slightly aggrieved that the second one went in just before half time. If anything is to change in the second half, Worthing are really going to have to be a bit more clinical, but Oxford are defending doggedly, and I wouldn't like to have to be trying to get past them. It is worth noting the sun started to move around a bit, so the view's only going to get worse. However, unfortunately, I don't really want to leave to get a drink or anything at half time, as the crowd is quite a few deep in most places, and the view is not fantastic when you're behind a few other people. So we will be stuck here. I do have a great position pitch side, which is far better than a number of fans today. This is due to the fact that for the first time in the club's history, their competitive attendance is over 2000 at 2017, and it's fair to say I don't think they could really cram any more in. And just like that, the second half's underway. We've already seen one remarkable comeback in the National League playoffs today, with Notts County winning 3-2 in the end. Will Worthen provide another? <laughs> Now, to be completely honest, the second half seemed slightly flatter. Oxford knew that they didn't need to do anything special, and Worthing just weren't able to string too much together. But, with that said, Oxford have a decent chance here. And just like that, unfortunately, it comes to nothing. Worthing have had some half chances, but for now, Oxford are back up the other end. Falls into what could be a dangerous area, but unfortunately, no one's there. Worthing do well to break with a precise crossfield ball, but unfortunately, the final shot is rather tame. We're well into the second half, and I believe Worthing have their first corner of the game. Can they make anything of the set piece? The ball comes to nothing, and Zach looks to take Oxford on the break. A lobbed through ball with a bit too much on it doesn't stop the player getting a bit of a kick in from the keeper. Another injury, another opportunity for the players to get a water break in. Hot today, and they're certainly feeling it. Back down the far end we go with another chance for Worthing, but they just aren't able to get through Oxford City's resolute defence. The players are putting their bodies on the line for it. You can tell they really want promotion out of this league. A free kick in a promising position for Worthing. Can they make anything of it? Did you ever get a 
a little flick on, but unfortunately for Worthing, no one able to guard it in. The match was drawing on, and it's fair to say a couple of the Worthing players were starting to get slightly frustrated. I think that may be the definition of cynical. Oxford fans are in great voice as we near the full-time whistle. Are they able to get a cherry on top of the cake with the final goal to seal the victory? Good defending in the end, and there wouldn't be an extra goal for now. Safe to say, the Oxford fans were starting to give it to the Worthing fans now. You could tell they felt confident. It was nearing long balls into the box time. No danger to the keeper of that one. Approaching the final few minutes of the game now, with injury time announced, Worthing realistically need to do something with this corner if they've got any chance of making anything of the game. But they're not able to, and Oxford get the ball clear. Full time is nearing ever closer, and surely Oxford have done enough to get through to the playoff final. And there it is, a fantastic result for Oxford City. Not so great for Worthing on the day, but they can be very proud of what they've managed to achieve this season. And as you'll see shortly, the fans were very appreciative of the players, and I'm sure they will hope to use this as a building block for further success next year. As for Oxford, they go again next week as they host St Albans in the playoff final for the National League South, looking to get promotion to the National League, just one tier away from the EFL. The 900 or so Worthing fans were great throughout the match and before. They did get a bit quieter when the team went 2-0 down, but it is difficult to keep the same enthusiasm when it becomes fairly inevitable what your result's going to be. But they showed the players how appreciative they were of them after the match. And Oxford players also got clapped off the pitch, but they'd be hoping that they'd be celebrating properly in a week's time. And as for me, it was now time to head back to the car. Quick note, if you are going to go to the Oxford game this weekend, don't park in this car park. We were sat here for about 20 minutes trying to get out. Now, for a quick overview for the cost of anyone who was interested, ticket was £14, the pin badge was four, and a can of Diet Coke was £1.50, meaning the total spend takes us to £19.50 for the day. If you did enjoy this video, please give it a like and subscribe. The series is continuing and there will be other similar content. But for now, let's show you what I got up to in Oxford before the game. As we parked up by the football club, there was a nice walk through the meadows to get through to the city centre. Even managed to spot what I believe is a heron on route. One thing to note when walking in Oxford, make sure you go down the pedestrians only route, cyclists will run you over. Nope, that's not the type of football we came to watch. Everyone always says how lovely Oxford is, and it is, but I've never seen so much building work going on. Anyway, time to go into the museums. First off, we're into the Museum of Natural History. The collection was fascinating, but the building itself can't be overlooked. The museum was established in 1850, and what a wonderful building it's in. Now with the time I'd left myself before the match, unfortunately I wasn't going to have enough time to do everything I wanted to do properly, so I took a quick skirt round. But it's fair to say you could probably just do this before your map, and you wouldn't feel like you were dragging your feet. I'd created a list of things I wanted to do, so we went into the River Pitts Museum next, which we accessed through the Natural History Museum. Another great array of items, but the totem pole was the thing that I was most impressed by. Just look at the size of it. I know Oxford's called the City of Spires, but I didn't expect this to be one of them. From there, we wander on, potentially to Oxford's most famous museum. And into the Athmoleum we go. Another museum I would have nowhere near enough time to go around, but a quick overview. There was a bit of Greek as we went in, then we saw a bit of the Silk Road stuff, and then finally some Egyptian. There was also some Italian stuff, but to be honest, didn't get to see a huge amount. Saw that we weren't going to be able to see much of it at all. Realising we needed to head back for kickoff, we got going via a couple of places. This Castle Mound, there's a great view from it apparently. Apparently it's two pounds to get up. I don't remember that using to be the case, but I refused to pay that obviously, so here's a view of the castle. At this point it became clear I wasn't going to be able to see everything I wanted to see. The Headington shop would have to wait for next time. Can't say I was too gutted to have to walk past this shopping centre though. And one of our final locations visit was the Covered Market. 
just did a brief walkthrough here, didn't spend any money because I'm too tight and we had a £20 budget for the day and £19.50 of it went on the football. I decided to walk home with the football be. Straight from here it was a short walk to possibly Oxford's most famous site which is the Radcliffe camera. Fair few tourists knocking around here, of which I was obviously one with the camera, but just be wary, it can take a bit of time to wander around um, if people are sort of milling around in front of you going quite slowly. Next we popped to have a quick look at this part of the Bodleian Library. Like everything else we did today, it was free. Everything in Oxford, like in any other city, can be as expensive as you want it to be, but hopefully this shows you could have an away day and not spend any money there whatsoever. Finally, we finish it off with a look at the Bridge of Size before heading back to the ground. And with that, thank you for watching.